We're on uh, Ray Gibran's farm uh, here in uh, Washington County on Co County Highway 29, and we're observing a, a field that uh, has had some uh, black cutworm damage and some wireworm damage, and we're also looking for some uh, uh, blackbird damage. So, Kevin, we got all kind of yeah, problems you do. out here. So. You've got everything going on out here, Jim. And, uh, you know, the, this is a really good example to talk to the viewers about what's going on out here because uh, at this time of year, cutworm scouting can have a number of benefits for you. Number one, the cutworms, you know, are, uh, are a very scoutable insect. We can catch them early enough that uh, we can actually get out there with a the rescue treatment and do a good job of protecting the crop. Uh, the other thing about it is that while we're out here looking around at, uh, at some of these insects, some of the wireworms and grubs and the cutworms out here, uh, I've also been taking note of some of the weed problems. You know, down in the swale down here, we've got some uh, water hemp and we've got some other issues going on. So uh, it's a good opportunity to get a good early look at the field. And uh, it really gives a lot of extra benefits. Yeah, we're looking to scout not only the field for uh, black cutworm and stuff, but also, like I said, uh, our second pass on our weed control is coming exactly. up here shortly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I noticed, uh, I noticed some grass breaks and a few other things through here, Jim. Is uh, what, are, what are you seeing out here? Well, we got, like I said, water hemp. Uh, we got some grass, yellow nutsedge uh, in the low lying areas and stuff like that. And we're going to come back with a recommendation. We got a little bit of atrazine down on this field uh, with the burn down, but uh, we'll come back and give it the full shot here. Okay, and good. Clean it up good. and uh, add some insecticide with it. Great. So uh, this this just helps illustrate the number of benefits we can get from just being out here looking for cutworms. Right. Exactly. Uh, like I said, uh, good stand count. We got twenty seven thousand on the plant population here, and we're right now we're just trying to protect that stand. Excellent, excellent. Evidently here we have a, a good start on a, on a healthy foxtail crop and we're going to eliminate this with a little bit of glyphosate and uh, some um, residual herbicide so should easily eliminate this foxtail in this field. Okay walking this field uh, Kevin and I just found a plant that uh, looks injured and stunted by something and we're going to see if we can find out exactly what uh, caused the injury to this plant. Okay, Kevin, it looks like we got a, some leaf feeding right here uh, in the upper leaf, and then it looks like uh, the stem has been injured or pretty well wrapped off. Uh, so yeah, looks like corn plants in it. I've noticed, uh, Jim, that in no-till, it's a little bit harder to scout for cutworms because in, in conventional till, you know, you got all that bare soil around it, and you can right. see where every plant falls over, whereas in no-till, a lot of times they stay upright just because of the uh, residue that's around them. But uh, why don't we go ahead and see if we can find one of the, the little right. worms around this one. It can be hard to find some of the small cutworms. Uh, they hide real well in the soil. By using the knife blade, you can very carefully move that soil away and hopefully find if there's a worm down there. I think we've got it. Hey, good eye, good eye. Yeah, we've got a black cutworm. Yep, right. looks like about a fourth inch star. Yeah, he's been feeding on this uh, plant, not only on the leaf tissue, but also right here on the about inch above the seed, getting ready to clip her off and yep. bring her down. Yep. Jim, I know that uh, especially with these smaller cutworms, uh, they can be pretty, uh, pretty difficult to identify the species. Mostly our concern is between the black cutworm and the dingy cutworm, but uh, the black cutworm tends to have a little bit of a smoother, shinier appearance than the dingy cutworm. And if we actually use a magnifier, we can see a difference in the, the spots or the tubercles on the back of this insect that will help us identify it. One of the main reasons that we pay attention to which cutworm is actually doing the damage is because the black cutworm is known to be a much more aggressive cutter of corn plants. Uh, they'll take out a lot more plants. They'll take a lot more plants out of the stand than a dingy cutworm will. The dingy cutworm is primarily a leaf feeder. Uh, it's the same cutworm that we often find feeding on tomatoes and other garden plants. They tend to climb up a little higher on the plant and feed on the foliage. So we don't lose as many plants to a dingy cutworm. That's the main reason why we have to identify whether it's a black cutworm or a dingy cutworm. In this particular cornfield, why is it important to protect this 27,000 plant population? If we go to a 3 or 5 percent feeding, Kevin, uh, we're looking at anywhere from a 4.5 to a 7 bushel decrease in yield and uh, the return on investment for your four dollars for in insecticide and doing your scouting well pays for itself as you can return as much as 25 30 dollars per acre on and that's why it's so important to keep the stands where you want where it should be at a harvest population it really does make a difference doesn't yeah. it so jim as you're doing this black cutworm scouting uh, do you ever run into any other confusing factors out there well uh, i noticed uh 
I get a lot of calls about black cutworm and I go out there and I find that it's bird damage and uh, uh, trying to convince the former that it is not black cutworm, that it is bird damage. And a lot of the questions I get, will that corn recover if the birds just tear it off? So well, that's, uh, that's a good question. And I guess the answer is that uh, when you look at what a bird does, of course they come along, they know that there's a kernel of corn down here, and so they'll go down the row and they'll just snap that plant off. They'll grab it with their bill or you can actually find marks where their bill has gone down part way into the soil. But their goal, of course, is to try to get that seed out of the ground, and so if they break it off below the growing point, that's a dead plant. And those darn birds can go down the row and they can take out a whole bunch of plants in a short amount of time. The other thing I noticed, Kevin, around the plant, there seems to be like a little hole where they've been yeah. picking at. Often uh, their, their to, beak try, goes yeah, in there, yeah. Trying to get to the kernel. And, uh, of course, as you look at bird damage, the, the ones that do most of the damage around here are primarily the red-winged blackbird and the grackle. Uh, we do have turkeys, we do have pheasant, but they tend to scratch more. They don't tend to pull the plant like those blackbirds do. Yeah, I noticed, uh, especially where they're roosting, uh, there's a lot of damage on the cornfields this year. Yeah.